you've got to look at the position when I arrived, because the first thing was that see, I have been through an intense period of introspection and we needed to identify what we wanted to do, who we wanted to deliver services for, and then the how could follow from that quite logically. So it was an analysis process of strategy. Um, we immediately identified that actually we were training people to become neutrals, but the number of people who wish to train to become neutrals is limited, whereas the number of people who need to understand about dispute avoidance, dispute management, and dispute resolution is substantial. So getting that exercise underway was the first step. From there, the how comes about. How do you deliver that? And there we've reformed the way we produce uh, education. We've looked very closely at our products there. We've developed a suite of um, courses that are not just for neutrals who want to uh, develop as arbitrators, adjudicators or mediators, but for people who want to understand about disputes, how to manage them and how to resolve them. Well, the military skills are all about analysing um, events in a very short period of time, looking at the options available, looking at the resources, and then coming to a decision as to how you're going to carry out your task. That transposes into business very easily, uh, and that really is the essential skill which comes as part of the leadership and the thought process behind what we're doing in strategy. I was lucky. 2015 was our centenary year, so there was a huge emphasis on what we were doing on an international basis. That produced a springboard for us. We formed a policy group. That has been immensely successful, uh, certainly in the UK, and now latterly it's widening out so that we do actually attract a global audience for what we're doing, both in judiciary, in government circles, as well as in the professions. Well, we grew from 300 students about three years ago to over 5,000 now. We are a profession and therefore we are at the top end, the elderly end, of uh, the spectrum. As part of our strategy, we needed to get the youngsters involved. We looked at segmenting so that, in other words, as a student or as a young professional, you need a very different set of training to those who are at the top end of the profession. Students are the future. Students will grow into the young professionals who will then grow into the neutrals. So they are a pipeline going forward. Anyone who has a vision on day one in a new organisation or an organisation that they are new to is fooling themselves. The first thing you have to do is understand the organisation and that again comes back to the initial strategy. What do we want to produce? To whom? And then how are we going to produce it? So my vision at that stage was to look at the strategy to identify what was needed and then grow it from there. Growth was always at the back of my mind. I think looking at the centenary looking at the way that we have then developed the policy unit has been a significant step forward. But actually, the biggest achievement is probably the defining of the difference between governance and management. They were very confused when I came in. There was crossover all over the place, which had created difficulties, and clearing that out has been quite a large and significant job reforming what's been going on, changing here with the executive, that's been a huge task as well. So all of those put together have made the job quite um, interesting. Uh, no, I don't think the attributes have changed. Um, a leader doesn't have to be the best at everything. What they demand is respect. If you've got respect and people will then listen to you and follow you, that's what you're after as a leader. It is aimed at making delivery much more efficient. We need to get 
a clear line for the person who wants a service to the, from their wanting it, identifying what they actually need and then delivering it. All of that comes out of the CRM project. We've also got to look at our own internal mechanisms. So on the financial side, we're now much more efficient. We've grown that. And we now need to look at the outward going side to deliver what all those services that we've now identified. Well, the frustration, the major frustration is in continuing to make sure that there is a clear uh, defining line between governance and management. It's far too easy in a member's organisation for members to start coming in and you become a bit of a pinball then, dashing from one idea a member has to another bright idea that another member has and trying to define precisely how we go about our business has been a major, major source of development.